Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Round 11 preview, the real preview. I know I did my own preview, but uh, this is really what we've all been waiting for. I don't need to introduce who is next to me, but I will anyway. He is the Collingwood, the Collingwood uh, fan channel uh, founder, uh, and that is Mr. Swoop Luke. Hello. How you going, Terry? Yeah, look, Mr. you know. Mr. Blue Abroad. About, yeah, Mr. Blue Abroad, you know. We're just uh, ticking along here. Um, I can't believe we're here. We're at round 11. I don't know about you, but I, I know that when the fixture comes out, the first team I look for is Collingwood, followed very closely by Essendon. What about you? Yeah, yeah no, 100%. Like, um, It's good that we actually, like last year, we get two games against each other. Um, it's been ridiculous when we only play one. Doesn't doesn't make sense for you know the biggest rivals in, in football to only be playing one game. So a home and away fixture, both of the MCG, but um, still, it's good. Good for Where football. Where it should be. I've got my yeah. tickets. I'm up on level four this week. It's a Collingwood home game. So I understand the Collingwood people will take priority. Um, yeah. Look, let's just get right into it. We've got a lot to get through and unpack. Yep. Uh, why don't we start with you and what is going on with Collingwood? Because I've got my view and maybe I'll share it after you, but what is the Collingwood situation? Um, it's a it's a unique one to, to the Pies. Um, Especially, you know, the big clear that we had, coaches, um, you know, staff, presidents and, and stuff like that. It's a it's a new it's a new Collingwood era and um it's been ushered in by a guy that wasn't a big name in Craig McRae. Um uh, in, in the coaching sort of world wasn't a sort of big name and uh, like a superstar, he'd 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 even say that. So, you know, it's something that, that we haven't seen for in Collingwood for, you know, 20, 25, 30 years. Uh, and it's good. It's good. It's um, it's interesting, but um, we I think we're I think we're in a good place for for where the list is for 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 the personnel that we have. You know, um, I think we're definitely in a good place at the moment. Yeah, my it's actually fascinating that we've both gotten one of the you know two of the the Brisbane era yep. coaches. Um, I think it takes time, maybe a couple, maybe a decade or two decades before these players after they retire to be fully ready to coach. I know Vossi coached at Brisbane pretty much straight away. And some may say, maybe everyone will say that maybe it was a bit early, whatever the case may be. I think now for us, same thing. It's we've, we've got a coach and we've yeah. got a coaching group that they, they're, they're serious and they're the real yeah. deal. And maybe we've done this preview for years now. And I've been very clear and honest that we've been shit house and un unaccountable and disconnected and all of that, even though I might try and, uh, you know, talk the talk and talk tough. I'm very clear that we've been a joke. And to be honest, this fixture for many years in our lives has been a Collingwood fixture because it's it just has, been Carlton yeah. haven't been ready. They've been too young. Collingwood just too good. Obviously you guys played off in a grand final, not, not so long ago. It was only, it was only five, well, four years ago, uh, four yeah. seasons ago. So, for the first time, honestly, I probably went early 2020 where I thought, yeah, we're ready to do it. Um, we beat you last year. That was a bit weird. You know, it was COVID affected, whatever. Um, I feel like this is the real, real first time that Carlton are going to be presenting with a genuine team that has a little bit more respect from the competition. Yeah. And like, look, I've, <laughs> I've had, you know, as a Collingwood supporter, I've had my fair swings at, at Carlton over the years and, and Have you, you saw put all your you put all your tweets on all my tweets on uh socials and stuff and that and that's fair enough like but you know oh i think i think towards the last couple of weeks it's just kind of been as a collingwood supporter and talking down to carlton still it's just like you don't want them to be good and it's just denial almost but look I t you're a fucking at the moment you're a top four team so there's no there's no denying there's no denying that and and you can't you can't become a top four team without beating teams um and that's exactly what you guys are doing what i use eight and two now so it's um yeah it's it's finally a, a fixture like you said where carlton have have come to play where we're both we're both in good positions at the moment it's not like collingwood at the bottom of the ladder and you guys are at the top or vice versa um we're on the same sort of sort of level new coaches um new game plans uh and you guys are just executing it really really well yeah, well, I think we're finally starting. Starting, we haven't proven anything yet, but we're starting to play a brand that is getting the at serious attention. And and to be honest, what you just said is not so different to what a lot of Carlton supporters have said. In that, it wasn't really until the last few wins, 
you know, GWS away and then Sydney last week. That some, if not most of the, um, what do we call them, the rusted on Carlton supporters, the ones that have seen the great times and yeah. have, have not believed in the direction. I think a lot of people after last week and the week before have now started to say, oh, okay, the turning point yeah. has come. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, And you can see, you can see it in your fans. I can see it in my mentions. So. <laughs> There's a few more. Uh, when we started this, there was just you and me and then and Pommy. And then yep. uh, slowly but surely, you've now started to uh, see a few more Carlton accounts pop up. Uh, I'm going to shout out the Almost Blues Brothers. We seem to be a bit uh, bit of a united front here on the Blue Abroad Network. Um, yeah. Talk yep. to me about how you've seen the rivalry evolve. Well, I, I know that, um, you know, I watched, your, I watched your video, your preview last night. Uh, and you said that, you know, you kind of don't feel it as much as, you know, the, the ones in the 80s and, and early 90s and the 70s and stuff like that. And that, and that's fair enough. But I think, um, and we mentioned this when we were getting interviewed by, uh, was it the Outer Sanctum earlier in the year, where I think we've ushered, I'd like to think we've ushered on a new rival, oh, fuck, I can't say it, rivalry, um, uh, just just via what we've been what we've been doing. And, and you came... Well, you got me on the channel really, really early on in, in my piece, but now there's a there's a bit of an army for both of us. Um, and they they all you have to do is post something, and then and then you can just sit back, and they go into bat for you, or they go into bat for me, and and it's it's really weird to see. Um, and I think that you know, without sounding you know too 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 up ourselves, like I think that we're doing a lot to bring this rivalry back, even if it's your fans hate me or, or my fans hate uh, you guys. It that's still a Carlson and Collingwood hatred. And I think we're, we're, we're slowly becoming, again, one of the biggest rivalries uh, in the AFL and on social media. I think what we are doing is we are digitizing the rivalry. Yep. And Correct. I think that's what was, that is one of the things that was missing from it, apart from Carlton coming to the party and actually fielding a, a team that's respectable. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I think it's the early days of it. And, you know, obviously, we're in new territory right now. What we do, it's it's totally new to the league. Um, you know, it's innovative, it's new, it's it's some may say it's disruptive, but um, yeah, I, I do sense over the last, we'll say the last twelve months. Now that the other accounts have started to get involved, uh, I do sense. I don't need to say too much. I just get to sit back and hundred percent. Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta start. Um, you gotta start the spark and 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 the fire. The fire breathes life life into itself. Yeah. Um, your youngsters, uh, uh, this is where I think we're similar because mm -hmm. we've got some guys that have played for a couple of years now in the Cripses, the Weederings, the, um, the Doherty's, our senior guys, your senior guys are the guys probably that played off in that 2018 grand final, the Adams and the Crisps and the Maynards yep. and the, the rest. So you guys have now got this like injection of youth. Ginevan's got, mate, Ginevan is on a thumbnail on the Blue Abroad YouTube channel. That's a big deal. Man, it's it's insane. Like, there isn't a day since as soon as the Frio game finished, I just started seeing Ginevan Stocker um, tweets. It's just crazy. And and um, you know, I I really haven't really thought of Stocker before, and now all, all I can see is Stocker this, Stocker that. Uh, I think almost Blues Brothers said that um, uh, Ginevan needs to prepare his soul or something. Um, it is just. For a, a kid that hasn't played more than a dozen games, that's absolutely nuts. It's absolutely nuts. And he'd he'd be lap. I, I don't know if he if he sees it all, but he'd be lapping it up if he did. That's for sure. Oh, I'll be honest. The first time I saw him, he had like the cute little curly hair, and then he I think after round one, he went to the blonde shorter hair, yeah. and I was like, "That's when you know, know about this." Listen. Full respect. Anyone who can come in and be unashamedly themselves and unapologetically themselves has got my respect because it's it's hard to do in this world where everyone's trying to mimic everyone else. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Um, no, I agree. So your youngsters, right? We're talking about the Ginevans, the day costs. I even look at Ollie Henry as a youngster, even yep. though he's been yep. in the system for a bit. Are they the ones providing the spark or are the older ones really still leading or is it a bit of both? I think it's, it's, it's a bit of both. When you said, when you say, uh, is, is it the older ones still leading? Scott, Scott Pernabry started off at halfback this season. Um, we put him in uh, the midfield in the Essendon game, and that changed it in that last quarter. 
last week, I'm pretty sure he didn't come out of that midfield. So when Scott's in the middle, it's him leading. But it's it's the Ginnivans, it's the Henrys kicking four goals um, last last game against Frio. Um, that do, yeah, you're right. That do provide the spark, and it's Isaac Quainel, it's John Noble's um, one percenters. It and, and and you can and you you'll see it with with you with you guys. All you guys are a, a youth pretty much with a handful of um, senior players. So you can see that you know these young guys do spark the whole team and and make everyone go up because now they've got senior players that can't get into the squad because these guys are there and they're providing something for us. Yeah, the 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 narrative around our two clubs is very different because we've had this expectation from the fans and from the footy world about where we should be in the rebuild and fair enough. But we are a very very young team. We had 12 players last week that played who are under 23 or younger. Um, we don't yeah. have a 30 year old currently playing right now. Ed Kerno is the one that would be that, but he's not playing. He's injured. Um, I find it fascinating how that narrative. Not, not that I care, but I um, and I'm not making an excuse that we're young and we could lose. Da da da. But there is a real youth about both of our clubs, and it's exciting because I think, and it's hard to imagine, but like I think we're going to be um, you know playing in finals before we know it, and these previews are going to be something else. Yeah, and. I don't want that to happen, to be honest. I don't think I, this is fucking what is it, round 11? I, I, I can't even do it in round 11, let alone sometime, you know, in late August. So, <laughs> God damn, I don't even want to think about that just yet. But yeah, but you're right. Like, it's, um, well, you had, yeah, what did you say? 12, 13 players under, under 23 or something, um, last week. So, and I think we had about nine or something. Um, so yeah, you can see that the, the youth are, are the next, the next generation. Penelbury, uh, Penelbury, Adams, Sidebottom, they're not going to be there for a long time. And they're – so Sidey and Pendles are over 30. Roughhead's over 30. Howe's over 30. Um, so I think last week we had three or four guys over 30. Um, so, you know, they're not going to last too long. Um, and then that's when youth comes into play and, and that's where we can see that getting games into these young guys like Ginevan, uh, Dacos and all that sort of stuff will will eventually lead to, you know, a late August birth. Yeah. I have to ask you. I have to. We need to talk mm-hmm. about Darcy Moore and Jacob Wiedering. We need to have the discussion mm-hmm. um, because you have been, you know, vocal in your opinion and you're entitled to do that. Uh, and that's totally fine. But has Jacob Wiedering gotten to the point where you can say he can stand side by side with Darcy Moore? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, I think that's that's been evidence. It's It's... it's it's weird. It's like as soon as you guys start playing good football, your good players that would would have st- stood out last year stand out more now because Weedering could have a could have a good game sometime last year or the year before, but you still get done by 40, 50 points or whatever it may be. Um, so you think, okay, he's still good, but not in a winning side. But now you guys are winning. And you see his uh, efforts against um, Franklin. You see, you know, against X, Y, um, and Z. And then you start, you appreciate it more. And and I don't, I dare say that Weedering probably gets his elusive AA jersey this year as well, because he is a he is a good player. I don't admit it, he is a good player. Um, but when you're comparing, it's you, and you'll know it when you when you're comparing players to players who keep winning games and players who keep losing games, even though they're in a good um, position themselves. You don't you don't take too much um, credit for them, for sure, for sure. I think Weedering is just a product of the shit team that he's yeah. been in, uh, yeah. and that's what happens with all Australian. The team that wins more games has more all Australian 100%. players, and that's the way it should be. That's just yeah. that's just the way it should be. Um, new coaching group, all of that. You got you guys have actually gone through quite a lot, and it probably has shown the strength of the club because you are a big club. I know I. You know, you know, you lose a lot of grand finals, and that's just part of your DNA. But you've gone through a lot. There's the do better report. There was the obviously the, the EGM talk, which we had our own version of that as well. But you had the the president situation. Um, what's the fan base like around all of this? Because I, I mean, obviously, I watch what's going on with you. I always keep in touch, and I, I you know, there's a divide everywhere in every community. You sort of get some fans. I saw your media manager, I think it might have been, or one of your content producers from the club, show some of the, you know, the, the shitty comments about um, yeah, yep. the AFLW. Yeah. So how do you manage that? I think, well, first off, I think the um, after all that, that sort of shit that we've gone through and, and you know, 
by our own by our own devices as well. Um, I feel like the, the club fan base is probably more um, in sync than than it has been for a while. Um, you know, as soon as the president got picked and, and all that talk died down, there hasn't been much chatter from either side. So I think we're and you know and we're playing good football as well at times. So I think we're definitely more side by side than we have been these last you know, three, four, five years. And even in 2018, when we did make a grand final, there was still lots of division between um, supporters. But I think, well, I can feel it. And, and you know, I'm in the, I'm at the forefront. Everyone, you know, um, I can see, I can see it all. So I, I feel like, yeah, we are more side by side than we, than we have been. But um, yeah, so what was your second question in regards to uh, all the, all the what, sorry? No, just, you, you really just answered it. Just about how do oh, you yeah. manage, what do you think about it? Like, how, how do you manage, um, you know, whatever division there is and mate, some of the, the allegations and all of that, you know, whether it was the, you know, Heritia Lumumba with, with what's going on with the do better report or the, yeah. the Jordan to situation earlier in the year, which um, was resolved in the way it was resolved. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of serious, serious things in there and you know, you're not the only club that has those sorts of issues. There's no doubt. Yeah. You probably maybe because you're Collingwood, it came to light a little bit more than the others. I think every club's got their own dirty laundry yeah, um, it's just tough. I, I just, I, I sensed it would be tough. I, I was basically watching from afar and thinking, shit, how would I do? How would I create the content? How would I talk about the club? How would I feel about the club if I had all of this really serious yeah. stuff going on? Yeah. And like, you know, the only thing that I can really do is because I'm not hot, you know, I, you know, I'm hired by the club or, or whatever it may be. I don't have ears on the inside. So the Herida, Herida Lumumba stuff, you kind of have to just leave that play out because you know that there's, you can see that there's going to be vocal support for and vocal support against. You just see it in all the Facebook groups. So you kind of let that play out. Don't post about it. The Jordan Nagoya thing, superstar of um, the club happens. You kind of just have to be so impartial uh, as to as to what you say. Just provide updates and, and that's all what I kind of do. And, and then, you know, you probably do it too. You just moderate comments. You, you have to, even with posts like for... For Pride or AFLW posts, you just got to moderate comments, um, and you know you, you just have to let this those those bigger issues play out in the media and in the club. Um, you, you, we don't really get a say in what goes on, so yeah, we're we're we're, we're not big enough to, to sort of do that sort of stuff. Not yet, not yet, not yet. So Sunday, three twenty MCG. Where are you sitting? Uh, so Legend. So it's in. N7 level two, I think. So behind Collingwood's cheer squad. Wow, this guy. Level two stats on the big day. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a Collingwood home game. So I'll be I'll be in level four. Uh, what is it? Round 23? Yes, you will. You'll be, I'll be making sure of that up on row Z. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you see the game playing out? What's the well, hang on, let's go back one step. What are the who are there anyone from uh, anyone from your end that's going to come into the side? Well, I haven't done my preview yet, um, okay. but I don't really, I don't really think so. Um, the only thing, the only guy I would want in would kind of be maybe a rough head to, but then you know he's not gonna, he's definitely not gonna come in. It's do they bring in Cox because that was the plan last week um, with that injury? But Ollie Henry's playing good, so if you get rid of Cox, you have to kind of get. Oh, sorry, if you bring in Cox, you have to get rid of someone that's more mobile, more low to the ground. Is it gonna rain? Is it not? So I, I honestly think that we just go in. As as we did last week, for I think this might that might be the first time this season, uh, first or second time this season where we might go in unchanged. So wow. I think we did a fantastic job against you know Fremantle that, that are another top four side, um, albeit in the wet. But um, yeah, I think I don't think there's there's much changes. I know Jack Martin's playing for you guys, right? He's a test, and I sort of want him in because uh, we're missing a lot of our best 22 just from the standpoint of the senior guys that are going to lead us forward. And um, Jack Martin is a, is a guy that I want to be playing on, on Sunday because he's just so good with the ball and he's tough and, and all of that. Um, gets injured, gets you know his body lets him down at times, but um, we've got you know three really, really, really young kids in Carroll, Motlop, and Corey Durden playing in the team right now, and they've both played – a total of well, Durden's played eleven or twelve, so uh, you know. But Motlop and and Carroll have played between them six games, something like yeah. that. So um, that's where I'm mindful. But at the same time, like, why not play the kids? Exactly, and and it's like, um, what was what would be the 
I guess the Richmond game would have been the biggest crowd that you guys played to this year. Yep. That's finals life. But now, eight and two, this will be a real sort of litmus test with there's it's probably going to be like 85,000. It's sold out. Yeah. Like general admission. There's probably going to be like 85,000. It'll be like a, you know, as big as a finals game. It pretty much is a finals game during the regular season. 100%. Now, I think we're a better side. I just do. Of course I do. I genuinely think well, we're a, the ladder. The ladder dictates that. So the ladder will say we're a better side, but, but, I just still feel I this. I am nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I'm nervous because I know what this fixture is, and I know that anything can happen. And you know, I do have faith that we follow the process and we focus on what we've got to focus on. But ultimately, the pies have this ability to believe, and that's where I'm a little worried. And um, you know, you've got the absolute master of the green shoots principles, Brendan Bolton, just sitting in the coach's box. He'll know exactly about all our boys and, oh, and what he was not able to do with them. But uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, there's a bit of nerve. I've got to give respect where it's earned. Yeah, it's um, um, you know, I'm just I'm just nervous because it's just a Carlton game, just in general. Like, but um, yeah, it's gonna be it's 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 gonna be an interesting game. And yeah, you guys are, I'm, I'll admit it, you guys are a better side. Aiden too. Fuck. If if I said you weren't a better side, then that would be just absolute bollocks, you know. Eight and two is and what are you guys? Third, second, third, third. Yeah. So that's just you know part and parcel there. Um, but seeing the good football that we can produce, I'd be nervous too if I was a Colton supporter. Darcy Moore doesn't yes. play on an opponent. Will he be playing on Charlie Kerno? No. Who does? I think he might line up on him at times, but. I think that, um, you know, without Harry there, um, that really helps us as well. Um, because, look, I think Darcy Moore might line up on him. I think the 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 main thing would be to kind of just not get the ball to Kerno, kind of intercept it while it's there, go two up on, on him. Maybe Hal gets a, a run on him. No one else can, can really go up against him. That's why I kind of wanted Roughhead in. So at least he has that body. Because Hal's not a one-on-one defender. I've said it for years, Hal... Hal can't play one on one, but him and Darcy have been kind of forced to, um, with no roughhead and no full back. You know, um, I remember last year Maynard played one on one against Buddy Franklin just because we were just short short stocked uh, in the back line. Um, so yeah, probably you probably see a couple of instances. I dare say uh, Kerno kicks <laughs> three to five goals on Sunday. Is that a winning? Is that a winning uh, score? Who knows? But um, yeah, I think and and Kerno's a big boy. Darcy Moore doesn't like that that sort of. He's not that sort of player, and neither is Hal. Um, maybe Murphy can go one on one with him, but we'll be begging, uh, not begging, betting on that intercept marking game to not allow Kerno to to get a to get a jumper. Okay. Do you guys tag? No. Uh... We tried. We tried to tag. We tried to. I know Pendles likes to run on Crips when Buckley was coaching, um, but there's. I think I was saying to. I don't know if I was saying it to Pommy or I was saying it on my live yesterday, where you guys are at the moment. You guys are just like Hydra, so it doesn't matter if you tag Crips. Doesn't matter if you tag Walsh. You've got um, Chera popping up. Hewitt is there. Um, Kennedy as well. So you can't take fucking six midfielders. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> um. Let's get a bit of a prediction going. How mm-hmm. is the game going to play out? Who's going to win? What's the storyline going to be? Uh, I think Carlton start off really quickly out of the blocks. Um, look, I'm gonna. I'm not going to say. I'm going to give you my honest answer, and <laughs> I do think Collingwood will win. But it's going to be. It'll be in the last quarter. I don't think we'll. I don't think any team will. And I, I truly feel this. I don't think any team will put this game to bed until the last. 12 or so minutes uh, of the game because it's just going to be one of those games where it probably won't even be high scoring. It's just going to be one of those games where it's just an absolute pressure fest, slog fest. Um, because as much as you want to score goals, you don't want you don't want the the crowd on your side um, to let goals uh, the opposition score goals. So it's going to be a defensive fest. I feel anyway. Um, I don't see whoever wins. I, I think Collingwood will win. Whoever wins, I don't feel like it'll go over um, you know three goals. Okay. I sense, do you, I don't know if you remember this particular game. We played you in 2018. We were kind of just kind of there for three quarters and you pulled away and you ended up winning by like five goals in the end. Um, 
Cripps kicked that really big goal that we celebrate and we post on Instagram all the time. Yes, whatever. yes I, I do remember that one. Yep. I sense something similar happening, but I'd with opposite. with Carlton winning. I sense um, we have been a great starting team. We were a little bit poor in the third quarters at the start of the year. We've sort of rectified it. I don't see this being a game where we get out to the massive lead like we have and then let other teams chip away at it. I just, I don't know. Maybe it will, but I don't see it happening that way. I think it'll be two to three goal game for the majority of it. And then yeah, I just yeah. think our group, they're just so connected for longer, longer than they've ever been before that we don't have as bad of these patches. Because when it comes to winning the game and putting the game to bed, we have this ability to, to now either do it or hold on. Um, I think Jack Silvani is going to cause you some issues because he just understands what it means to play in this game. And uh, I think you're going to learn exactly who Corey, D uh, Corey Durden is. And I think you're going to know exactly uh -huh. who Liam Stocker is by the end of this round. So just, just on that uh, uh, as well, you said about um, going out to Leeds. So I think, so the Port game, and I know the, the game that you just played against Sydney, you get out to a nice six, seven goal buffer. Um, and it, and Collingwood used to do it all the time where you just kind of take your foot off the break and then the other team starts getting momentum. But then I guess at that case, the game's dead already because to be able to kick seven goals in a row for the other team, you, you, you flatten them anyway. Um, does that kind of, does that kind of scare you or not scare you kind of make you nervous where you might be four or five goals up um, and it's kind of cruisy. And then you, you just let another team sort of in, which you, you, it's been evidenced uh, throughout the year that you have done that. Albeit you've won, you've gone on to win the game because the other team is gassed trying to kick six or seven goals, but they've gotten really, really close to you. Like Port was one. Um, uh, and obviously Sydney last week. Yeah, it's nervy. It's a fucking roller coaster. <laughs> it's it's yeah. and you know it's coming because you know that kicking night last week it was nine goals in the quarter. Hawthorne, I think it might have been seven in the quarter in the second. And you kind of feel like you've mentally broken the other team and like you really are the dominant team on the day. And in last week's situation, you know Sydney are coming back from that. You know, you know you're not gonna be up by 40 points plus at the end of the game. You know they're not gonna roll over. I know that if we get in that situation this week, Collingwood won't roll over because it's a Collingwood-Carlton game and that's just not what happens. Even when we were really shit, we would still find a way to keep it you know, within four to five goals and not yeah. totally embarrass ourselves. So I think we haven't learned the art of managing the game yet. I think we're getting better at it. But I also think that when we do go on our hot streaks, they're getting hotter and hotter. So, um, and a, very interesting that Roughhead's not in. I didn't realize how important he is until you mentioned it, because he is important for Darcy Moore. He is important for Jeremy yeah. because he for that, whole, that whole back system. Yeah, like, you, you, and you would know if you lost if you lost Weirdering as your as your full back, it just kind of stuffs up your whole your whole system, you know. And because we pride ourselves on that intercept marking, and and Darcy did it yesterday. I think he had uh, yesterday last week. He had fifteen uh, intercept possessions or, or something crazy like that. Um, uh, and, and how does it how does it as well? when you lose a one-on-one -on -one defender and we only have one or two of them in the club, um, that doesn't help you your stocks. And, and uh, that's why I, I like Magin in the team. Yes. He, he, he'll do one, two really dumb things a game, but he's not that intercept player. He's the guy that at least, you know, is going to give you a one-on-one -on -one contest. So it lets Darcy Moore over the top. It lets Hell over the top. And he, imagine might get beaten, but so would Darcy Moore anyway. So, it's it's going to be an interesting game, especially with Kerno. And we saw it with the Geelong game. We were, I think we kicked nine goals in that third quarter or eight or nine goals in that third quarter. And then Hawkins, with no rough head, Hawkins and um, Jeremy Cameron get off the leash. It was always going to happen because, you know, they're two of the best forwards in the game. Um, but that's what happens when you don't have – when you have to rely on your, your skinny intercept markers to play on big, big twin towers. It's a shame, you know, all Australian center half back Darcy Moore can't play one on one. It's just a real shame, I think. Yeah, like, but you know, I guess he's, he'll be crying into his all Australian jacket. Um, I guess so. Yeah, living it's in the bad. past, just like the bad. Carlton supporters have been. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, mate, you know, I love you, but I can't fucking wait to watch Carlton win by 48 points this week. Is that what you reckon? 48? I think we're going to blow you away, mate. It's all over. <sighs> That's talking very, tough. Man. I'm going to talk tough. Man. I'm going to talk tough. <laughs> I've, 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 I don't know if you've noticed, but I've kept my, I've tried to keep my mouth shut this week because if we win, 
There's, I've got so much ammunition that I am just going, I've got so much prepared. I'm just going to hit that big red button if we win and it is, it is going to be on. I can't wait. I'll be there. I'll show up. I won't shirk a contest. I've sat there watching you on Twitter. You actually post more about Carlton than what I do. It's fascinating. Oh, Twitter. It's, that, it's that, cl that classic narrative. That's what all the cult it's, I post about a lot of, I post about a lot of things, mate. So you just happen to be one of the things in my sites. Oh, well, gosh. Well, anyway, <laughs> I'm not saying good luck. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying good luck either, mate. There's, there's no, it's, it's, it won't, whoever wins, it won't be fucking luck. It'd be, um, it'd be when, when Ginevan, you know, kicks four on fucking Stocker and then all your, all your little fans start deleting their comments, you know, that's, that's what it'll be. Well, or when Bo McCreary puts Stocker in, in his place, I'd happily, I'd happily give up, a, a give up Bo, Bo's any amount of goals he can kick if he just lays one tackle uh, on Stocker just to, to shut you fucking guys up. Well, I'll tell you what, the standards at Collingwood would have really dropped when we were hoping for one tackle. I'll tell you what, fuck it. <laughs> I look forward to this, mate. Vossi's men, at the end of the day, Vossi was the captain of the Brisbane Lions and McRae was his follower. So I look forward <laughs> to seeing how that one plays out on Sunday. Let's go, mate. All right, mate. Take it easy. Have a good one, brother. See you, mate.